presented by Caltech. Most of you have seen this photo or some portion of it before snapped by Apollo 8 as it was orbiting the moon. And you've probably appreciated Earth as a beautiful uh, ocean world with its shroud of clouds hiding, but also its atmosphere protecting all of the various life forms and then the, the astonishing complex variety of life that we have on our planet today. And it's juxtaposed against the cold, lifeless uh, surface of the moon. So a question that I and the folks in my lab ask as planetary geologists is, why is this so? What is it that has allowed Earth to develop this teeming, complex set of ecosystems in life sustained through time, while other planets develop no such system, or had them and then, and then lost it. So as a, the geologists, we can look into the history of Earth. So Earth was not always so uh, beautiful and clement as we see it today. We think that during the Hadean, it was being bombarded by projectiles from outer space, uh, creating impacts, uh, heating the surface. But even from some of the very first evidence of Earth, the oldest mineral grains and zircons, the oldest rocks, we see evidence for the existence of liquid water on the surface. If we step forward, we see evidence uh, at about 3.8 billion years ago for rocks that were laid down in a water-rich environment, perhaps in an ocean. Three and a half billion years ago, the first microbial evidence for life, we see it. Presumably it existed somewhat earlier on the planet. So for at least three and a half billion years, life, sustain, uh, life was sustained on Earth. Now, it wasn't always life as we know it. It wasn't until two billion years ago that we acquired our oxygen and, and the, the, the life-sustaining gas uh, for, for ourselves uh, today. So we know a lot about Earth, but there's this shroud that's been drawn over it by, by plate tectonics. Less than 1% of our rock record accessible at the surface is from this earliest period that seems to be seminal in setting the direction of a planet's evolution. Fortunately, uh, we're not limited to one planet, though, in exploring the question of what is it that makes and sustains habitable environments through time. We can look to Mars, and on Mars, over 50% of the rocks at the surface are from this critical first billion years in its history. So let's look at Mars. Mars today, there's no water, no, no oceans, uh, a dry, dusty world uh, covered with, with, in effect, rust, iron oxides uh, scattered on the dusty surface. But Mars was not always this way. So now I'm showing you a topographic map of the planet. We've tilted down so that we're looking in the northern hemisphere of Mars. And you can see the ancient channels draining into this depression. For all the world, it looks like there was once an ocean there. And indeed, we know that there was water running on, on the surface of Mars. So the question is this. Why is the evolution of Mars so fundamentally different from that of Earth's? Why doesn't it, too, have this uh, teeming, uh, water-rich world today? Why the change? Over the last uh, decades of, of Mars exploration, in large part due the, to the leadership of faculty in, here on campus, hard work of students, and then our unique partnership with JPL in being able to create, design, implement exploration missions to answer these questions, we've gotten a progressively higher resolution view of, of Mars. Uh, chemistry, mineralogy, and the ability to look at stratigraphy, that is the ordering of rocks to trace the history. So here we're zooming into one of Mars' most ancient terrains, a stratigraphy with at the bottom in blue in this false color infrared, clay-rich minerals formed in liquid waters over 3.9 billion years ago, atop that a carbonate-rich layer uh, deposited likewise through an environment that was neutral to alkaline pH would have been fabulous for life. We see this in multiple places across the planet. Here's another example, a clay-rich a clay stratigraphy. Here we have aluminum clays above iron-magnesium iron clays. This is something that if you went to the tropics on Earth and you dug a soil pit, this is something you'd see today from, uh, forming from, from waters leaching the uppermost surface. And we also on Mars see beautiful bird's foot deltas debouching into, crater, into basins and craters that once held lakes. 
So as we look into the past on Mars, we also have the rovers uh, in these stratigraphies from uh, their collection of layered rocks here from Meridiani Planum. Folks including John Grotzinger and his group here at Caltech have examined the very, very fine scale evidence of liquid water. You see the scallop ripple barks from a, a stream or a shallow uh, lake moved by wind, leaving its traces in the sedimentary rock record of Mars. So when we look at ancient Mars, when we look at its first billion years, we can now just start to populate this diagram and compare it to what we see uh, at Earth during this time. And in many ways, it's a richer record. So we know that on Mars during this period, there were valley networks that formed rivers across the surface. There were outflow channels of water. There were hydrothermal environments like Yellowstone type springs, lakes, groundwaters. Then the question becomes, were these environments habitats for life? Would they, would they have possibly developed it through time? Well, so first of all, let's look at some of these environments through Earth. So this is uh, uh, from the Bandy Lakes in Western Australia. So the pH of this particular water when we sampled it is a pH of two. Yet it's teeming with life. When we sample, when we, look, we see life intimately associated with minerals precipitating and tombing them to help create little micro environments where the bacteria and archaea thrive. We look at uh, cold, ice-rich uh, ice environments. This is a volcanic crater lake from Iceland. And two, when we look at the sediments in detail, they too have life clinging on the edges of the surface, and in some cases thriving, reproducing as the hot volcanic gases percolate through. We see springs heading through uh, um, rocks in, in Oman and precipitating life among the minerals in, 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 in pools. So the question then, these were clearly, these types of environments clearly host life on Earth. The question is, were they habitats for life on Mars? So this is the question, right? And we have our uh, robotic geologists on the surface beginning to examine the answer. And so Curiosity has, uh, for the past years, been exploring, armed with a suite of instruments that we develop here in our laboratories, since we can't yet bring the samples to Earth. That is the work of the, of the next mission. We do the best we can with our tools for chemistry and mineralogy to unravel the answers to these questions on the surface. So Curiosity has been exploring the base of Mount Sharp, named after a, a former Caltech geologist whose seminal contributions led to the, the honoring the naming of this, this mountain and its unique stratigraphy on Mars. We found evidence for a lake in Gale Crater, a yet another habitable environment on early Mars. In terms of the life question, though, the jury is, is yet out. We've drilled 11 holes in the surface uh, of Mars, and in some of them, we're finding hints of organic molecules, hints of that the building blocks for life were present on Mars. But it will remain the work of the coming years of this rover and for future missions to come to answer the question of were these ancient environments on Mars habitats for life? Another question, though, you might ask is, even today, are there habitats for life on Mars? It's really two questions. The first is, on Mars today, I said it was cold, dry, rusty. Are there still environments that are potentially habitable? And then separately, the question, are they inhabited? So Mars today, uh, you wouldn't have any trouble with the upper part of the temperature range. It gets to about 80 degrees Fahrenheit on the equator during a warm day in the Martian summer. The lower part of the range, probably don't want to experience that. Uh, the atmosphere of Mars is also very thin. It's less than 0.6% that of Earth's, and it's all carbon, almost, it's 96% carbon dioxide. If you were to take uh, the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere today, take a column and condense it down into the surface, you'd have six precipitable microns of water. That means a layer of water less than the width of a human hair. That's how dry Mars is. And yet, Mars, even today, has a, a hidden past that indicates that, that conditions may have once been different. So with radar missions over the southern polar cap of Mars, we've actually found pockets of Mars atmosphere sequestered in the upper layers of the ice. So this is CO2 ice trapped beneath a thin layer of water ice that if released to the Mars atmosphere would actually double, more than double, the atmospheric pressure on Mars, on Mars today. We know that Mars also, um, on time scales of only a few hundreds of thousands to millions of years, changes its tilt 
on its axis. And as you can see on the right, this changes where the ice is stable. That means the ice has to pass through the atmosphere. The water vapor acting as a greenhouse gas, the enhanced CO2 acting as a greenhouse gas to warm the Mars surface during these obliquity excursions. We, know, we have these same obliquity excursions on Earth. They're Milankovitch cycles. They're less than a degree variation in our Earth's axis. And here you can see the profound wobble that Mars gives and then the, the changes in the climate that result. Finally, one of the most important, significant, curious findings even today are these, uh, they're called recurring slope lineae. They are these dark streaks that in the late spring, early Martian summer extend down hill slopes. Are they water? Are they salt brines? We've found salts associated with some of them that would lower the freezing point of water, just as you sprinkle salt uh, on, a, on, a, on a driveway to, to, to get rid of your snow. Here we've found salts um, associated with these. Is there liquid water on Mars today? We know that on Earth, where there is water, there is typically life. So these are one of the most intriguing features and, and, and are going to be a subject for exploration over the next decade. So now our question, Mars to Earth. As we look forward out into the solar system, this question actually has gained an increased importance because we now know that each of the many of these stars hosts planets much like Mars, the Earth, and Venus. As we look out into all of these exoplanets of similar size, the question then becomes the same. What is it that makes and sustains a habitable environment through time? The rovers that we send to the surface now its shadow extending on the surface is a proxy for us human geologists. It, it, it extends our curiosity outward to the, to the planet. We're able to ask and answer questions about what are the limits of life, what physical factors in a planetary system let it sustain habitats through time, and how unique or not is our own planet uh, in this universe. Thank you.